to our channel also press the like button or pass your comments as you deem fit please also um, share our messages these messages are meant to be distributed worldwide please be part of the evangelism and uh, share the messages press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos our target is to load at least one message every day. Uh, please, always check on our channel. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you, Daddy. We worship you. Thank you, Daddy, for another beautiful day, a day you have made. Thank you, Lord, for our yesteryears. Thank you, Daddy, for this year. Thank you for the journeys that we are taking again this year. Thank you for being with us all through the journey. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for our nation, our families, our, ourselves as individuals, and the peoples of the world. We appreciate you on their behalf. Thank you for the plants. Thank you for the animals. Thank you, Lord, for all the works of your hands that you have made to give us you know, comfort. Father, we thank you most especially for your manner of life that you give to us, the word of God that is guiding us in this journey. It is the navigator with which we navigate this world. Thank you, Daddy, because you also reveal yourself to us, even directly, to show that you are a living God. We appreciate you, Daddy, for all the revelations, for all that you've done for us. We say thank you. Daddy, we appreciate you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. Because every now and then we commit one sin or the other. Knowingly or unknowingly, please have mercy upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as we also 
commit sins against fellow men. Lord, please have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who sin against us also, we forgive now. Lord, please forgive them also in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, Lord, come and speak with us, Lord. Holy Spirit, come down, manifest your power today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We give glory to God for another opportunity to be in His presence on a Sunday like this. Today's uh, Bible passage is taken from the book of John, from chapter 8 and from verse um, 21. We'll stop at a comfortable place. God bless you as you go on. Amen. Then Jesus said to them again, I'm going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, and from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I say to you, that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. God, God bless you, ma. That's okay. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This morning we are going to address the topic which says, Serve the God that you know. Serve the God that you know. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is like a student sent to school and the vision of the parents is to come out of that school with flying colors. The vision of the parents is that that child's tomorrow will be better than theirs. The vision of the parents is that that child will come back to be a blessing to the family. The vision of the students, uh, of the parents, is that the child will end up being better than they are. Very good visions. But the child has two options. If he must come out with flying colors in his school, he will be somebody, or he or she, will be somebody that keys into the vision or visions of, uh, of his parents, of his or her parents. And um, there are two options for that child when he gets to school. It's either that the students follow the path that the parents have laid down for her or him, so that by the time he's through with the school, he will not only come out with uh, good grades in the final exams, but also will be a useful student that will be a source of blessing to the family as expected. Or the child could decide to go to school and go and join the bandwagon. They become unserious. Like that, the boy, that the boy would say, he once said, that if you are a student and the time you are supposed to spend doing your studies, you are using it to go and pray and fast or do vigils, that the Holy Spirit will comfort you when you fail your exams. 
what a truth, a frank one for that matter. So the child or the student may decide to go and be out there joining bad boys, going for cultism, you know, leaving his studies unattended to, and, you know, going about looking for luxuries. So, at the end of the day, what he comes out with will depend on the choice or choices that he has made. Deuteronomy 30, 19, uh, 30 verse 19. Say today I've shown you the path of life, the path of death, the path of blessing, the path of curse, curses. That the choice is yours to make, to choose whichever you like. But I beseech you, choose life. Amen. That's God for us. In everything we do in this world, there is a choice. And then coming to the topic. I don't know, you see, we have been in, in, in our various churches for several years. Somebody may be in a church for his lifetime or her lifetime without knowing God. A person can be a pastor, can be a daddy geo, a mommy geo. A person can be bishop, archbishop, archdeacon, whatever title. The most reverend God, uh, bishop, the most reverend uh, whatever, archbishop, whatever it is, the titles we give to ourselves. One may study this Bible for his own lifetime without understanding it and without even discovering who God is. And that is very rampant in today's church. Now, if we look at the passage read to us today, Christ was talking to the people. He said, you will die in your sins. Because of what? You don't even know me. You are going to church because of me. You are going to Bible studies because of me. You are going to videos because of me. You are going to programs upon programs upon programs because of me. You are fasting every now and then. Every year you observe 40 days fasting and then even in between all the time. You pray in tongues yet you don't know me. Therefore that you will die in your sins. May God Almighty deliver us from the path of perdition in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And there are few ways by which one may end up going to church, yet he does not know God. Amen. Amen. And unfortunately, he thinks he knows God. He who knows not, but does not know that he knows not, <laughs> is the greatest fool. Amen. You don't know something. And you do not even know that you don't even know. Which means in your uh, ignorance, you will still be proud. That is why you find that many churches today, they claim they profess to know God. But truly, they don't know God. Amen. They don't know God. It is better to be few in a church and know God than to be plenty to command the greatest population in this world, but do not, uh, I mean, one does not know God. It's a calamity. Now, many of us, even the followers, not just the leaders, it is true that the burden is more on the leaders because the leaders ought to know it is Christ they are selling to you. They ought to know that Christ. But you, the followers, too, you are supposed to know Christ. Not necessarily. Amen. Not necessarily even through your leaders. Amen. Because many leaders lead people astray. Because 
One, in all honesty, they might be reading the Bible, but they don't understand. The second one is they may be they may have understanding, but they may choose the path of destruction. The path of destruction is that they know the truth, but and even they teach the truth, but they don't practice the truth. So you do not see a reflection of what they teach in their lives. Another set are the people that are greedy for gain. Those who are greedy for gain, for instance, they will set Christ aside and concentrate on money making. And thank God that that is becoming an open thing now in Christendom. At least people are beginning to have understanding of the word of God. Once again, I give glory to God for those whom God gave special abilities to invent the social media. Because it is from the social media now that you can gather ministrations of various so-called ministers of God together and then compare what they are teaching and preaching. And again, also compare everything with what the Bible says and then you pick the truth and you know the truth. And most of the times, the truth, I mean, does not tally with what our leaders tell us is the truth. I always give the example, for instance. Any church where you are not taught about Hebrew 7, in particular, if you don't understand anything in the Bible, just please understand Hebrew 7. Because that's the one that delivers you completely from the shackles of oppression, exploitation, and slavery that, you know, the church has subjected you to, either to. Because many of our leaders, they understand the laws of the Bible, which is practically the Old Testament. They know the laws about tithing and the laws about first fruit. They know the laws about uh, fasting and prayers. They know the laws that are there. But out of the 613 laws, they pick the few, especially the greedy ones. They pick the few of them that benefits and profits them directly. The way God wants his church to be run, for instance, is not to turn into a commercial center. But because of the greed, the churches that choose to decided to make it a commercial center. And such churches, they will do everything to preach Malachi 3, 8 to 10 to you. And they will tell you you are cursed if you don't pay your tithes. They will tell you something will happen to your firstborn if you don't pay first fruit to them. They will tell you the various, you know, but they will not tell you also the purpose of instituting those laws in those days. For instance, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, <coughs> excuse me, from 22 to the end, you will see that the Bible is very explicit about Titan, for instance, collection of it, who collects it, what purpose is it to be used for, how often should tithes be paid, and so on and so forth. They will, they, but the people that are teaching you for their own gains will not tell you that. Neither will they use the money or the, well, you know, the, in the, in the Deuteronomy 14 we are talking about. They will tell you, 
it is money, money, money. Whereas it is goods, produce. It is meant to take care of the orphans, the widows, the, mess, the visitors, the Levites in that place. They won't tell you. Now, they will not also tell you Hebrew 14, Hebrew 7 from verse 14. Because in that Hebrew 14, all the laws, including laws of tithing and first fruits and all those, you know, um, obnoxious laws have been replaced. Even the Levite's order has been removed. The Moses um, laws have been changed. That a new covenant took over from there. That is the change that we are talking about. There is a change in the Bible from the law to the period of grace. But we will still be teaching the old ones. So many of us, we don't know whom we are serving. And we become servants to money. We become servants to religious activities, not to God. Then, how do you know whether you know the God that you are serving? Number one, if you are serving God, that is the God that you know. You will know about that God by studying his word. Look at Jesus still telling them, even in the New Testament, that you will die in your sins. He explained to them, I am here. And yet, you don't even know me. You are still looking for another Messiah. That's the Jews to whom Christ came. Then, the Christ is with them. Instead of knowing him, accepting him, doing his biddings, they ended up, yet yeah, so these are religious leaders, they call them scribes, they call them teachers of the laws. They know the law, they know Old Testament very well. They know the rituals. And unfortunately, they did not even realize that Christ has come and is with them. They don't even know. Christ himself is saying, you will die in your sins. I am with you. You are still looking for me. That was how it was till Christ even was crucified and yet they still didn't believe. That's why somebody could open his mouth and say, look at him, he calls himself the Messiah and save yourself now. They are very blind. You see, the journey to good success is a straight journey. But the journey to ordinary success or bad success, whatever, there is bad success. That is, if you still to make money, you've succeeded in making money, but it's a bad success. The journey to the kingdom of God is a straight one. What does God expect of you? First of all, you have to know that God. If you don't know that God, how do you know his mind? And how do you know that God? First of all, you'll be friendly with his word, his, his instruction manual, which is the Bible. You'll be familiar with it. How many of us are familiar with the Bible here? Are we not just taking over what our leaders are teaching us, and most of which are deception? Amen. And then, Having known, you know, you have to fam familiarize yourself with that God. No wonder. The Bible says, don't look at your pastors. Because if they fall, you will fall. A lot of people no longer go to church today because many of their pastors they've discovered have goofed. And why have they, have, have, have they goofed? Either because they are greedy for gain, or they are just deceptive in nature, or they don't understand the word of God and they think they understand. So as a result, they mislead the people. And when the people now understood, they started withdrawing. Some prefer to go back home. I remember in my days, in those, when I was in the other churches, I told you, especially the last one, you know, 
The way we talk about tithes, I didn't even know. Many of my members had to leave the church because, because we were trained. In fact, we called whosoever was not paying tithes. We called them Akans. And the leadership at the topmost in that church will tell you, drive them away from the church. Drive them away from the church because there is no money coming from them. And I discovered that a number of people had to leave my parish because of the way that I was hammering on money, money, money. Later on, I had to apologize when I saw the light. That what, you see, we bring in so many people through these, um, what do you call it, let's go fishing programs, which would have been a good way to attract people in. But when they come in, we impose levies on them. Tithes, you know, partnership, normal offerings, which is acceptable, normal donations, which is acceptable. But the method of collecting these donations is like you are into a kind of um, compulsion. You don't give, you don't receive. True, but there is a way God wants you to give. Not in their own way, when they cajole and they, you know, force you. And then um, there's this one they call target, you know. Every church has its own financial target to meet. And that has bred a lot of corruption because men is either you put yokes upon the leadership of the church, that is the parish pastors, especially at the lower level. The yokes are so heavy on them that many of them have to revolt. The yokes are so many of them, many of them they don't have the opportunity to really serve God, but they are serving mammon. Many of them will leave the work of evangelism through through and be going about, you know, you know, spotting people that came into the church and you know be demanding money from them. At the end of the day, and then the church itself will go on for programs, certain you know, commercial programs that you know they will still come and say people should donate and they issue receipt and issue it to you. Say this is how much you will contribute, they size you up. At the end of the day, everything is in misery. Spiritual upliftment is no longer there. And even conventions. You donate, donate, donate. It's never enough. And there are people now lost the touch, the spiritual touch that they come for. They begin to wonder, is this a church of God? So you must have to know the God that you serve. The, our religious leaders, they are so religious that they look at things of the world, just like Christ says there. Say you are looking at things of the world, your laws. The law of harvesting, the law of uh, uh, what do you call it? a lot, a lot of sacrifices. But what are we expected to do? But unfortunately, on our own part as followers, we ourselves, we did not even know the word of God, we didn't even know Christ that we, we come to follow. Then the church becomes a place of sorrow, a place of agony, a place of just name it. You are going there, you are no longer, your mind is not with God, your mind is with your geo, how much you will make. At the end of the day, you go back home worse than you are. And then the churches will also go around and begin to fake miracles, serving God of mammon. Thank God that they are, all of them have been exposed now. So, at the end of the day, because it's either the leadership 
does not know God themselves, and the followership who should also. You see, in Matthew 28, verse 16, Christ talked to you there. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you join a church and they are teaching you the various word of God and so on and so forth. The bottom line that God expects you to do what Jesus expects you to do is to graduate to the point where you start preaching and teaching and baptizing the people yourselves. Not that you are gathered together like a a cult group that cannot even live. Even some churches went to the point that if you leave their church, they will do everything to make sure that even if God had called you, then your ministry will not prosper. They go fetish. Amen. But if you know God yourself, no such powers and principalities can overcome you. And how do you know this God? You know God by, you know, by studying what God wants you to do. As far as knowledge is concerned, Joshua 1, 8 to 10 tells us, the book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall study day and night. You make the Bible your friend. You develop good relationship with God. You pray to God and God speaks to you. Even the more you know about the word of God, the more God will reveal himself to you. Amen. Then number two, Christ taught us a lot of things that our ignorance or our willingness to learn is what still keeps us in the level of ignorance. Christ summarized the whole of the Bible in Matthew 22, 37 to 39 that the kingdom of God is about you loving God. That is with the whole of your heart, you have personal relationship. We all know, we boys, we know when we are looking for maybe a partner or girlfriend. We know how intimate we are with them. Greater intimacy is what is required to be between you and your God. Greater intimacy. Day and night, you are eager for God. You study the word of God, you pray to God, and you want to know what God you know, wants you to know. And not only that, you put into practice what God wants you to practice. Amen. By the time you know God this way, then Christ came up and taught us again that another thing is to love your neighbor as yourself. The same Matthew 22, 37 to 39. See, love your neighbor. As that summarizes the whole of the thing that the church is all about. And Jesus also taught us Luke 1 and uh, Luke 11 41. Luke 11 41. That, you know, yes, you pay your tithes, you do everything, but you, you ignore the matter that is more important, weightier matter, which is. To do justice to fellow men. And what is the justice? The same thing that the Bible mentioned in the Truman chapter 14, from verse 22. Justice to the people, justice to the orphans, which was what the Titan is meant for, justice to the Levites who were assigned the responsibility of administering the word of God and managing the church of God, and the justice to visitors helping the poor. The needy. Christ came back to tell us that James 1 27 makes it clear to us that if we say we are a church of God, there must be manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit that manifests in form of taking good care of the poor, the widows, the orphans, the visitors, and so on and so forth. Caring for people. These are the things that God wants as a space of us to do in the church of God. And then in Matthew 28, verse 16 forward, tells us, go and preach, go into the world, 
preach, teach the word of God. Thank God for a day of internet like this. You are on the internet now, you are watching me. Ministration should not be limited to the local parish. Even it went so bad in the church of God that the church, many churches will not want you to listen to any other message from any other church. They don't want you to marry from any other church. They don't want you to, you know, they make sure that you are camped, psychologically camped, financially camped, time-wise camped, mentally camped in all ramifications that you never can even think outside the box. Amen. And what they are teaching you is something that just profits them. Put money in those baskets. Amen. So, if you know God, you will know what he wants you to do. God wants you to pray to him. God wants you to know the word of God. God wants you to preach and teach. God wants you to help the needy. Many of us we have been so indoctrinated that we don't remember our parents. Many would rather put their money, they would rather tithe in the church than take good care of their parents, take good care of their children. Some have used their children's school fees to tithe. Not because it's convenient, because we are told that when you tithe, then a lot of things will come. And how do you also know that a church does not Practice what God wants you to do. Anything you are giving to the church of God must be voluntary. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, chapters 8 and 9. Please read that, please. Any church where you are compelled and you are told that nothing will come to you unless you do this, unless you do this, unless you do this, no, it's not so. As a man purposes in his heart, that's how God wants you to give. How many times have we been foolish? And the church made us to feel that, yes, we are doing the right thing. That's why tithing does not qualify as part of money to be collected in the church of God today. Because it carries curses with it, and it carries, um, what do you call it? It does not carry blessings per se. And Hebrews 7, 14 has changed it. It's a, it's a law the mosaic of the mosaic order. The law that we are operating now is the one that is Jesus Christ in who brought the new covenant in the order of Melchizedek. These things are clear from there. But because we have been brainwashed, we are not looking at, you know, amen. Many, it was reported the other day that um, a student, I think it's abroad or so, one of these are mega churches, placed all her school fees in the church because they told her that within 90 days something will happen that will multiply that money. And it was after 90 days she realized that she was so foolish. And she dropped the money and nothing happened. She had to threaten with suit and she collected her money back thank god she was able to collect but how many are able to go back and say collect? if many of us have been forced to pay tithes and all that through the cajoling and through the the law of tithing in malachi 3 8 to 10 which is no longer valid invalid the repudiated the erased the cancelled the jettisoned law malachi 3 8 to 10 that they have used because that's the only money that they can easily budget. They have budgets for it. And whereas the, God, the Church of God is not a commercial center, whatever comes in from the people voluntarily, yes, offerings, voluntary donations, not the one that is imposed, who can give me one billion. Whether you steal it or not is not the issue. Who can give me one trillion? Come and see me at the body. And then whatever that person is doing, what concerns you? I just hope that those people are answering it. They are, they are not fulfilling it if they do. 
We have seen the result. Their life is not better for them. God does not demand all these things for He does not demand. You are not under compulsion. You are to give voluntary. God requires you to do. Expects you. Yeah. It's not a demand. It's an expectation. If you love me, nobody will tell you to give to your pastor. If you love me, nobody will tell you to donate to the church of God. If you love me, nobody will tell you to take care of the orphans. If you love me, nobody will tell you to take care of your parents. If you love me, nobody will tell you to take care of yourselves, your siblings. If you love me, nobody will tell you to take care of your community. Amen. Because practically everybody is serving the God that they don't know. Christ is with them. They don't know him. They are still even quoting the Lord that you should know him on Sabbath day. And even Christ told them, say, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. We need to know the God that we serve. In summary, Once you become a Christian, we should do by forsaking your old ways, becoming born again. John 3 16. For whosoever believes in him, the love of God is so much that he gave Christ to us. Now, if you believe in Christ, you move to the side of God. You leave your old ways and you begin to do what Christ wants you to do. And what does Christ want you to do? To do justice. To everybody, to take care of the widows, the orphans, your parents, your family, everybody, your friends. You are no longer limited to your tribe. You are no longer limited to your nation. You are no longer limited to your state. You are everybody's, you know, Christ's family cuts across. Amen. Christ's family cuts across. Is if I removes all religious barriers, tribal barriers, sexual barriers, uh, rich poor dichotomy, men women that dichotomy, all sorts of dichotomies in this world, all sorts of discriminations that we have in this world. Love removes them away through Christ, because God gave Christ to us because He loved us, and Christ loved us because before he could give his life to us. Now he expects us to do likewise, to sacrifice for others. Amen. Amen. How nice this world would have been. Nobody would have taught you not to steal in your office. Nobody would have taught you not to commit adultery. Nobody would have taught you not to steal. Because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will be working in you, teaching you all things. Amen. Amen. So in summary, as I said, those who know they are God, they do his bidding. Taking good care of other people, even their pets. Amen. The Lord will be with us in Jesus' name. So if you are in a church and the pressure is all about money, not about even helping your parents, helping people around you, the mind of God is that you should do that one. That church is not doing the will of God. Amen. So don't follow them. Because they will sap you. And they will still blame you later. Because one of the annoying things is that when you now say that God did not want this thing to be done and done, they will tell you, did we force you? Amen. Whereas, you see, when you are repeating something over and over and over and over, and over again, it's is established in that mind of that person that unless he does it or she does it, something evil may happen and then is compelled to do it. How long will we continue to do this in the church of God? Whereas you are supposed to be an ardent reader of your Bible. You are supposed to be somebody who is doing good all around, just as Christ did you're supposed to preach and teach the word of God. Anything outside these ones are religious activities. May the Lord God Almighty, who is delivering us now from the hands of the oppressors, may he continue until we are all liberated and begin to serve him in truth and the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Shall we be outstanding as we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for this great opportunity to hear from you this morning. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. As many are still in that are still in captivity, many of them are being in captivity because they have been charmed and they have been chained down. Please, Lord, you are greater than any other power. Please free your people, Amen. even from now onwards, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let them know you. Amen. When they know you, nobody will say a time will come that. Nobody will need to minister to one another. The Holy Spirit will do it and everybody will be doing the will of God. Let that time come, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. As many as are still lazy, not wanting to know the word of God, and even some of them say, let me be their slave, slave forever. O oh Lord, compellingly, out of compulsion, deliver them from these oppressors. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. At the end of the day, oh Lord, in this race, like I said earlier, somebody may make this journey for a whole lifetime, and yet he does not know you. Let's not fall to that category Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us make it well in this world, and let us make heaven addition. Let us reign with you till eternity. Father, we thank you. Bless be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Kindly share this message. You see, please, brethren, the essence of this message is to bring you to God. I want to come to Him, do His bidding. You can go to any church that is around you, but through their practices, you will know which one is fake, which one is real. But you can even be in a fake church and be real, because if you know the Word of God, you will not do what they ask you to do. You will do what God wants you to do, and your life will enjoy peace, and everything will be well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.